Today on Beginning Engineers, I'm going to be talking about lean manufacturing, eliminating waste to make things better. What is lean manufacturing? Lean manufacturing is all about eliminating waste, and the Japanese word for waste is muda. So even in the United States and in industry, you'll hear people say muda, and they mean waste. So whether it's from a process and or a system, we're getting rid of waste. Lean manufacturing focuses on leaving only those processes that contribute to adding value. So you may have heard of value added. If it's not value added, it's waste. Lean manufacturing is derived mostly from the Toyota production system. The image on this slide shows the pillars of lean manufacturing, which come down to tack time, so the time it takes to make a product based on the customer requirements, pool flow, so pulling the parts that you need as you need them, not just pushing a bunch of inventory around hoping people will use it. The other pillar is man-machine separation. So it's very important that you automate where applicable or have machines assisting people to make things easier. Now this all leads into quality, delivery times, and costs as the roof of this building. There is just-in-time on the left side and Jadoka on the right side. And Jadoka is kind of catching mistakes as soon as they happen and problem solving immediately. As the foundation for these pillars, you have Kaizen, which is continuous improvement, which I'll talk more about later, and 5S. 5S is all about organizing your plant. Think of it as industrial cleaning. I'll do a separate video on 5S in the future. So if lean manufacturing looks to eliminate waste, what kind of waste is there? Well, there was originally seven types, and people conveniently called them the seven deadly wastes, a lot like the seven deadly sins. And I do have a video talking about these more in depth, but here's the general overview. Any transport that's not directly needed to create the part is waste. Extra inventory is waste. And that really ties into the lean ideology. Extra motion you don't need, waste. Sitting around waiting, that's waste. And you're probably familiar with that one in your real life. Think about all the times you've had to wait in line. Overproduction is waste. If you make more parts than you need, there's no guarantee you'll be able to use them in the future. That's waste. Overprocessing is waste as well. That's when you do too much to the part. It only needs two coatings of paint, but you give it a third. You think you're adding quality to the part. You're not. You're just overprocessing it. And defects are waste too. Think about all the time and effort that goes into making a part, only to have it be defective. In recent years, people have kind of added on some more types of waste. One is unused talent, which is great, but from an industrial engineering standpoint, incredibly difficult to measure. Then you have products that do not meet the customer demand. So not products that aren't defective, but products that aren't even good enough for the customer which does sound similar to defects. My guess with this is that it involves poor communication. So how does one go about eliminating waste? Well, the lean manufacturing method has tons of different tools you can use, and each tool could be its own video and its own course of study itself. Here are some examples though. You have single minute exchange of dye. This is really focused on changing over a production cell from one machine to the next, or multiple machines to the next machines, in less than 10 minutes. It's not a single minute, it's a single digit minute, so nine minutes or less. This way of thinking really stems from Frederick Taylor, the father of scientific management. If you really can standardize your dyes, it makes it a lot easier for maintenance to swap them out. Then you have value stream mapping, which is a high level flow of the process. It's very useful for mapping the current state of the process and a potential future state. It's probably the farthest back you can step and look at a process, very general. So you're talking about things like manufacturing, shipping, etc. You have 5S, of course. We've touched on that earlier. My image there shows what each of the S's stands for. And a lot of people even add a sixth one or a seventh S. Then you also have pokey yokes. A pokey yoke is typically a mechanical tool or device that error proofs the process. It prevents a defect from getting through. Usually because of the laws of physics will not allow the defect to happen. At least the best pokey yokes are that way. So we've talked about how lean manufacturing really stems from the Toyota production system. 
So here are four rules that make up the Toyota DNA. All work shall be highly specified as to content, sequence, timing, and outcome. And this ties in really well with organizational quality control systems. So operation standards, standard times, specific job tasks, job details. The more precisely you can define the work, the better you can do it, measure it, and control it. Rule two, every customer supplier connection must be direct and there must be an unambiguous yes or no way to send requests and receive responses. As someone who's dealt with customer quality, I know my plant wasn't quite at this level, but boy, would that be nice. The third rule, the pathway for every product and service must be simple and direct. So that kind of ties in with value stream mapping. Keep things as simple and direct as possible. Then the fourth rule that makes up the DNA, any improvement must be made in accordance with the scientific method under the guidance of a teacher at the lowest possible level in the organization. And I'm a big proponent of this. This is a really good way to get things done. Actually go out to the floor or go out to where the problem is occurring or the improvement you want to make is based at. Talk to those people and get them involved. Make sure you have someone who's helping to guide you and who is an expert in the relative area. And of course, back up what you're doing as well as define the initial problem or improvement you want to make with numbers. Because without data, an opinion is just an opinion. We've talked about continuous improvement a few times, so here are three general parts of continuous improvement. Challenge. Have a long-term goal in mind and always challenge the status quo. If you're just sitting around and you're happy with where you're at, you're not challenging things. You're not going to continuously improve. Then you have Kaizen, which is synonymous with continuous improvement. Improve on a frequent basis continuously because you know nothing can ever be perfect. It's okay if the improvements are small. Just keep doing them and they will add up. This last one I'm not going to be able to pronounce very well. Genshi Genbutsu. Um, I've heard of it as Gimba Kaizen. This is the idea that you should go directly to the source for facts. It's a hands-on approach. Create consensus and reach goals at the best speed possible. So this kind of ties in with the fourth rule of DNA listed above. It's all about going to the source. You can't just sit in your office away from everyone and expect to know what's going on. In summary, lean manufacturing is a broad concept that incorporates many ideas and also mixes with other management systems to help reduce waste. It isn't one singular defined thing. Many companies have adopted some form of the Toyota production system. Many of the words we have covered are used in multiple industries, not just engineering, but also management, service industries, things like that. But in general, if you're struggling with a tool from the lean manufacturing tool set, just remember, always apply the KISS approach. Keep it simple, stupid, to solutions. And use common sense. If something's not working, even if it's worked in other places before, don't use it. You got to use what works best. Look at the facts and see what is making a difference. If you're ever in industry, I'm sure you will come across someone saying TPS or Toyota production system or keeping things lean. It's almost everywhere in industry. Every company has their own version of it, it seems like. So this video, I believe, will prove very useful for you. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm trying to do a few videos a week for the summer of 2016. I hope you've learned a lot about TPS and lean manufacturing and that it makes you a better engineer or just a better person in general. Have a good day.